Hi, we're talking today about how do you grow bigger fruit, and we're really looking at it in three separate sections. The first thing we're thinking about is we all know we need nutrients to grow fruit, but it's a bit more complicated than that. And the second part we're thinking about is the form of the nutrient and the sequence has to be right. And thirdly, we're thinking about we can either try and mimic a complex natural system by our own interventions and our own timing, or we can leave it all to biology in the soil to do the work for us. So let's just take one step at a time. First of all, the fruit size in the orchard is determined by a series of nutrients. And these nutrients are effectively calcium and potassium, with help from zinc and also boron and manganese. But they have to be in the right form and they have to be in the right place at the right time. And the easiest way of getting that there is to make sure that the calcium comes into the plant in the autumn through the roots and is taken up and ends up in the fruit buds to be ready before the fruit buds open and they're pollinated. And what that does is it makes sure that there is enough calcium to start to grow an embryo uh, of sufficient size. The more calcium that's in that embryo in the spring, the larger the number of cells and therefore ultimately the bigger the fruit can grow. But there's a problem because calcium and another nutrient, potassium, which is also very important, are antagonistic. And if the potassium is in the fruit bud over winter, it has a habit of occupying a lot of the space and it doesn't like the calcium to be there. So ultimately you get small fruits and there's not much you can do about it if you haven't got the calcium there in the first place. So to prevent that potassium happening, that, that arrival of potassium happening over winter, you rely on the input of manganese from the soil. And if you've got enough manganese in the soil, that manganese will downregulate the potassium uptake over winter and prevent the potassium being a problem. Once the, the embryo is developed after a few weeks, two or three weeks in top fruit and apples and pears, etc., the potassium can then come in through the soil, uh, through the root system and from the rest of the plant and start to grow that fruit successfully for the rest of the season, providing succulence, flavour, um, keeping qualities and all of the rest of it. The calcium's there as well, providing its share of um, its effects as well. So things like bitter pit are avoided or blossom end rot on things like tomatoes, if we were talking about tomatoes. So the potassium and the calcium antagonism, as we would call it, is solved by there being enough available manganese. The calcium is also brought into the plant by having enough boron in the soil. Boron has this habit of directing calcium very effectively to where it's needed. So you must have boron. But there's one more piece to the puzzle that you have to get right. And that's making sure that the leaves around the fruit buds, um, when they open, are as large as possible. Because most of the sugar that the fruits need to develop will come from these spur leaves or the leaves nearest the fruit. If they're not big enough, they simply don't provide enough sugar and metabolites during the growing season. So the important nutrients in this are zinc and also nitrogen. But of course, nitrogen is something that's generated mainly in our system by the soil. And the great thing that we have here is we use urea because that comes from the grazing animals. So in our system, it's zinc that's taken up from the soil with the urea from the grazing animals that makes a massive difference. So now we come to the, the options that you have. You can either try and mimic all of this sequencing by using um, different inputs at different times. You can try spraying different things, perhaps calcium sprays on leaves, perhaps zinc. But particularly calcium isn't taken up very well through leaves during the growing season. It's much more effective if it comes in through the root system through the winter. So you have to put the calcium in in the autumn. If you put lime on the ground, lime has quite an oxidizing effect. And although there is a lot of calcium already in the soil, calcium carbonate can be quite destructive to soil um, long term if you over if you over lime. So we don't use lime. So the way we resolve this problem is we rely on the biology of the soil to sort out the sequencing, to get the timing right and to work with the grazing. So our system is quite basic. We have grazing sheep which come in in the autumn, roughly 50 days uh, at the end of November. Then we apply 
our first application of rock dust, um, which the basalt rock dust that we use has all the trace elements and some calcium and magnesium, potassium, and that makes sure we have the zinc and the boron on there as well. That is then taken up by the bacteria and the fungi, which are signaled by the plant during the winter and the spring as to what they need. It's all brought in at the right time in the right form, the non-oxidized form. Then we have some more grazing um, and then um, in the spring and also some more rock dust. So we have a sequence going through the winter. And then by the spring, the plants are fully able to form their large fruits. And that regenerative system is very cheap to run. It's very good for the soil biology. And it's the system that we like to rely on here.